Hello my beautiful people, my dragonflies, my kings and queens. My name is Jai and welcome to my channel. And I'm watching by Isaac. Isaac. Isaac Carlson. Lion King Theory. Was Mufasa a bad king? I don't think he was. I think he did his best to do it. Um, was right for him and for Simba and everybody else in the prior lands. As you can say, and just teaching Simba off and all this shit, as you've seen. Everything the light touches is all kingdom. But the king's time is ruler, rising and fall at the sun. You know? Tell him the truth, what he needs to hear, and what he wants to hear, you know? And this is. Well, Mufasa back king, so let's see. Sit back, relax, and let's watch. Do you think Mufasa was a good king? Well, here's what I think. Personally, I've always loved and respected Mufasa. I adore yes. the way he taught Simba about the world, defended yes. his son against all odds, mm. encouraged him in his darkest hour. But recently, when I began to reflect on Mufasa's reign as king, I began to see that he might not have been as perfect as I once believed him to be. In my mind, Mufasa's two largest failures as king were his relationship with his brother Scar and his relationship with the hyenas. Now, the truth is that both relationships were complex from the very beginning of Mufasa's life. And to understand where these problems came from, we need to look into the past. As Simba stated in the storybook A Tale of Two Brothers, the path of the son begins with the steps okay, of the yeah. father. You see, Mufasa's father, Ahad, and passed on many the issues he dealt with as king to his first movie son. About Throughout Mufasa's their relationship, childhood, his younger brother Scar often well, felt before, neglected by his father, and Ahadi struggled to keep the hyenas under control. There were times where Ahadi would discipline Scar, and he condemned the hyenas for hunting for sport, but he failed to change either of their hearts before he passed on. And that left Mufasa in a difficult position. Mufasa inherited a family and a kingdom that was divided, and while he attempted to maintain both, he never failed to keep either one together. Scar repeatedly acted against Mufasa and the circle of life, but because Scar was Mufasa's younger brother, no matter how many times Mufasa was betrayed, he refused to stop looking after him. The storybook A Tale of Two Brothers were shown that from the time Scar was a cub, he was constantly attempting to embarrass his brother. In the series The Lion Guard, we're told that Scar murdered lions within the pride when they refused to help him take down Mufasa. For years, Scar was allowed to deviate from oh. tradition and threaten his brother's friends. He openly disrespected his nephew and mocked his brother's authority as king. Even though there were clear signs that Scar was filled with rage, resentment, and frustration, Mufasa allowed those emotions to fester. Oh no, Mufasa. Perhaps you should turn your back on me. At the same time that Scar was allowed to rebel against his family, the hyenas were running wild across the kingdom. In the Pride Lands, there is a history of hyena clans being greedy, selfish, and disrespectful towards the circle of life. For generations, hyenas have desired to go where they wanted and eat as they pleased, and they were often willing to do whatever it took Rebels to make those really desires are. a reality. Many great kings had to handle the threat hyenas posed to the stability of the kingdom, and inevitably one king decided that the most effective solution would be to banish all hyenas from the Pride lands, and that would continue into Mufasa's reign as king. By the time Simba was born, Scar was known to be dangerous. There was plenty of evidence to justify Mufasa acting against his brother in order to keep his son, wife, and subjects safe, but he refused to utilize his powers as king to ensure the preservation of peace. You see, long before Mufasa, there was a precedent set by great kings of the past that allowed the king to banish animals from the kingdom. When animals threatened the circle of life, they had to be handled so that balance could persist within the Pride Lands. Shenzi's clan of hyenas is a perfect example of that kind of situation. The reason Shenzi, Banzai, and Ed lived within the elephant graveyard throughout Mufasa's reign was because at some point their clan was banished from the Pride Lands. The hyenas, though, aren't the only animals that we've seen banished across the history of the Pride Lands. You see, when Mufasa's son Simba reclaimed the throne, he banished members of the Pride Lands to solidify his place as king. Only this time, the animals were other lions. Why would Simba banish other lions? Because Zira and her family, they were loyal only to Scar. When Zira attacked Simba, he felt he had no choice but to force Zira, her family, and her followers to leave the Pride Lands. And for years, he enforced that banishment. I banished you from the Pride Lands. You and your, your younger, get out. Kings of the past and future. 
Yorkshire were willing to banish animals, but Mufasa just couldn't bring himself to banish a member of his own family. And while I think there's some honor in that, he also didn't take the necessary steps to create peace with his brother. Mufasa would have had the conviction to put the safety of his family and his kingdom before his love for his brother. I think the Pride Lands could have avoided a lot of suffering. If Mufasa would have utilized his power as king to banish uh, Scar after any of his acts of rebellion, Scar would have become pretty powerless. You see, Scar's banishment from the Pride Lands would have resulted in him being unable to rise to power in any kind of diplomatic way. Specifically, the tactics Scar used to actually rise as king would no longer have been able to work because he would have been completely removed from the line of succession. And there would have been a shared understanding across the Pride Lands that he was not... But me thinking, you think uh, he would be more mad if he was banished? More angry and just take out full, full revenge and just go full out. You just say, at the, I'm murking everybody in a way. Never know. Not someone who could be trusted. Not only would there have been no way for Scar to take out his brother and nephew by manipulating them into manufactured dangerous situations, but even if Mufasa and Simba died by some cause, the Linuses would not have embraced Scar as their next king. Honestly, in an unfortunate scenario where the king and his son both passed while Scar was banished, my assumption is that Sarabi would become queen of the Pride Lands. The only way then for Scar to become king would have been through violence. But obviously Scar knew king, that queen. he could not win a challenge against Mufasa. I would Technical. dream of challenging you. He wouldn't be able to become king by ceremonially fighting his brother one on one. So he would most likely have turned to the hyenas if he wanted any chance of taking Pride Rock for himself. The truth is though, that any kind of open assault on Pride Rock by Scar and the hyenas would have absolutely failed. If Scar attempted to take control with a hyena army, Mufasa and the lionesses would have been ready. I mean, we're shown in Simba's youth that patrols were established to detect when hyenas would arrive in the Pride Lands. Hyenas! In the pride land! While they weren't perfect at all times, Mufasa absolutely would be notified if there were suddenly dozens of hyenas entering the pride lands at the same time. Also, mm -hmm. through the Battle of Pride Rock, we're shown that the full might of Scar's hyena army was no match for the lionesses of the pride lands. So Scar and the hyenas would not have been able to take over the pride lands in any kind of major attack. But, but a different outcome might occur if Scar built up a larger army. In the Lion Guard, when Scar was brought back I mean, as a fire like, ghost like, in the Outlands, he assembled a collection of different animal I mean, factions to build a new army. In addition to recruiting the hyenas, he was also assisted by jackals, crocodiles, skinks, and vultures. Maybe if Scar was banished to the Outlands, he might have been able to bring together this kind of army before his death. But when all animals in the Pride Lands fought against Scar's army of Outlanders in the Lion Guard, again, Scar's army was never able to be victorious. The only advantage the Pride Lands would not have against Scar's army of Outlanders that was present during their victory during the events of the Lion Guard was the Lion Guard itself. That group could only be assembled after Simba's son Kion was born, or if Simba had a younger sibling to form the guard. But I think Mufasa and the animals of the Pride Lands would still be able to hold off Scar's forces without them, especially if the battle took place before the devastating drought that was experienced during Scar's rule mm. as king. The only way I think Scar could have actually taken out Mufasa or Simba is if he could ambush them when they were alone. This was the tactic used by the Lions of the Outlands to attempt to take Simba's life in the Lion oh, King 2, yeah. and I think it could have been an effective strategy, especially against Simba when he was just a cub. But again, that could only happen if Scar and his followers were able to covertly enter the Pride Lands and somehow find them alone. But I do think Scar could have found someone he trusted in Pride Rock to help his army target the king and his son. You see, Scar was said to have a close relationship with the Lion Azira during his reign as king, and by the time of his death, he had grown a loyal following of lionesses who saw him as the true leader of the Pride Lands. If he had forged any kind of bond with Zira before his banishment, or was able to establish it after he was sent away, she could have been a dangerous ally. I mean, Zira could have individually taken out Simba as a cub within Pride Rock, or she could have been the lioness who lured Mufasa to an ambush, or into a stampede. Oh. 
But of course, all of this would only be able to happen if Scar and Zira's deceit was able to remain hidden. I'm sure if Mufasa had accepted that Scar needed to be banished, he would have become much more willing to remove other lions who had an allegiance to his younger brother. There were a lot of avenues for Scar to explore after he was banished, but for the most part, Fantasy his banishment game. would have left him in a much weaker position than the one he had as a member of the Pride Lands. But instead of taking action, Scar was permitted to live in Pride Rock while he secretly forged alliances and formulated plots that directly led to the King's death and instability rising across the Pride Lands. Of course, though, Scar didn't act alone. Mufasa not only failed to mend his relationship with his brother, he also failed to see how important it was to create peace between the lions and the hyenas. You see, Mufasa and the rest of his pride never saw hyenas as similar to them. Some hyenas like Jasiri knew her whole life that lions and hyenas were the same, but many great kings refused to see that, which led to the Pride Lands becoming a place where most animals were distrustful and frightened of any hyena they came across. There was a shared understanding that every hyena was a threat. A hyena? Panic and run! No! Panic and... Do not panic and run! While hyenas were viewed as barbaric for hunting and scavenging, animals across the Pride Lands adored their king, even when they were prey for the lions. And unfortunately, Mufasa never worked to redefine how his kingdom viewed hyenas because he was so focused on fighting them off. And that only allowed a justified fear to grow. And lions really do think all hyenas are bad. All the ones I've met are. Well, Mufasa stated that all creatures existed in a delicate balance. He failed to remind his subjects that hyenas were a part of the circle of life just like any other species. But most hyenas respect the circle of life. We're the cleanup crews. We hyenas eat what you lions leave behind. And by continuing to separate lions and hyenas, Mufasa unknowingly allowed a silent, more sinister belief to flourish within his kingdom. You see, the citizens of the Pride Lands weren't just scared of hyenas, they grew to hate them. Even Zazu, one of the king's closest advisors, thought that the hyenas were beneath them. But Zazu, you told me they're nothing but slobbering, mangy, stupid vultures. But it wasn't just a belief that hyenas were bad. Lions were historically the only animals who were viewed as being truly capable and deserving of respect. Of course, Scar and his followers, like the Lion of Zira, believed that their species was destined to rule. And throughout the Pride Lands history, there were traditions that emphasized this belief that lions were the grandest animals. And some of them even lived on during Simba's reign as king. The Lion Guard, for example, was a team that had been assembled for generations to defend the Pride Lands. That group had always been made up of five lions until Simba's son Kion recruited a cheetah, a hippo, an eager, and a honey badger to fight by his side. Simba, though, didn't have faith at first that other animals were capable of keeping the kingdom safe. The Lion Hi. Guard has always been made of lions. Yeah. Do you really think a Lion Guard with only one lion That's what can he protect used the to. Pride Lands? Simba eventually did support Kion's Lion Guard, but his apprehension shows us that there was a flawed understanding of the circle of life being passed down from generation to generation. And I think Mufasa unknowingly was a part of these problems. While Mufasa didn't consciously believe that lions should be prioritized over all other animals, the truth is, he didn't always treat animals with the respect they deserved. I mean, Mufasa was willing to embarrass Zazu to amuse his son and himself. Pouncing? Oh no, Sai, you can't be serious. Uh, this is so humiliating. And to me, that doesn't feel that much different but than how Scar forced Zazu to sing for him Kong in Pride Rock. Antelope. The Pride Lands looked to Mufasa as an example to aspire to, but by continuously battling the hyenas and occasionally tormenting his own advisors, I think he was sometimes showing his kingdom that lions did operate above the circle of life. There was an unspoken belief in lion superiority during Mufasa's reign, and I believe it contributed to the deep animosity between lions and hyenas that was able to be exploited by Scar. You see, compared to Mufasa's aggressive enforcement of his loss, Scar appeared to be an ally to the hyenas. Since Scar brought them food and followed them in his plots and offered them a place in the Pride Lands, the hyenas were convinced that he was on their side. I mean, you're one of us. I mean, you're our pal. But while Scar and his lions appreciated how vicious and powerful I mean, he the hyenas were, they never you know. truly respected yeah, them. Scar was willing to have hyenas serve beneath him, but he never saw them as his equal. They were viewed as pawns. The hyenas were only only a tool that mm -hmm. Scar could utilize to help him become king. Yeah. And the truth is that if any lion saw the hyenas as anything more than that, they were viewed Where as an look? enemy of the pride. Whose side are you Bait. on? Lions or hyenas? 
don't think Mufasa intended to abuse his position as king, and I don't think he ever wanted to make his son, his wife, and his subjects suffer. But I do believe that the results of some of his choices did lead to horrible consequences for his family and his kingdom. I think the saddest part about reflecting on Mufasa's time as king, though, is the fact that it was cut short. I'd like to think that Mufasa's heart was in the right place, so maybe if he was given enough time, he could have yeah. resolved the problems that plagued him as king. But I think He's one of Mufasa the could have done so much pride. more than that. I believe Simba would have benefited would greatly from can. having his father and mother with him during his childhood. I believe he would have managed the droughts in the Pride Lands better than his brother. I think he could have helped avoid the civil war that broke out in his pride. I think mm. Mufasa could have earned a long, happy life. But the yeah. good he could have accomplished and the happiness he never got to experience just never got to exist. And unfortunately, his death ensured that he'd never be able to pass on a better kingdom to his son. Scar would go on to haunt Simba throughout his entire life. And if you'd like to fully understand why, consider watching my video on the topic, which is linked down below. Finally, I'm Isaac Carls. I Scar would go on to haunt Simba throughout his entire life. And if you'd like to fully understand why, consider watching my video on the topic, which is linked down below. Finally, I'm Isaac Carlson. Thanks for watching, and have a magical day. Hey, Isaac Etsy Carlson. has dazzling home decor for makers. Etsy has home. Shop now. That was my nice video, but like I said, like you said, Mufasa was a great king. He did his best. He done all he, he could, could, could do. It's probably for his, um family of the pride or do as best he can um he was used to um being taught what he was taught when he was younger and he probably didn't want to manage his scar because it's his brother he did he was giving him the benefit of the doubt but i'm thinking if he did um banish him would it be worse for him would he want to just say freak everything after everything we gonna tear shit up you know what i'm saying but I know Mufasa as best he could, but I like Mufasa. Yeah, you just never know, because I'm just saying, if you're a bad person who's just trying to just ruin everything, you just do it. Do it all and do, do the best you can. You know what I'm saying? So that was Isaac Carlson, Lion King Theory, Welcome Mufasa the Bad King. I want to watch more of his videos too. So yeah, think about what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, share all the wonderful stuff. Have the most awesome, positive day. Stay grateful, stay blessed. Until next time, do this.